So the past couple of weeks, the UK, about five or six weeks, the UK has had just an epic, epic heat wave. It's been absolutely stunning. It's been so nice that that's one of the reasons why I've not actually been able to get out and uh, do any landscape photography. Um, but today, there's actually a bit of cloud in the sky, so I've jumped at the opportunity to uh, run down to Three Cliffs Bay, which is a really, really stunning location on the Gower Coast in South Wales. So, um, yeah, looking forward to getting down there. There's a nice mixture of cloud and sun in the sky, really, really strong sun. Uh, so hopefully, I've visited this, uh, this location a few times over the last couple of weeks, and um, yeah, it's just been really, really bland blue skies. And, um, I've been asked to take a, a nice sort of panoramic image of this beach and so I really really want to get it right. It's so bright I can barely see. We're expecting another heat wave this week and I think it's going to get like mid 30s which for the UK is pretty ridiculous and we've had about six or seven weeks of it. It's absolutely incredible um, but yeah not so good for landscape photography and certainly not so good for hiking because it's too hot. <laughs> so the second reason that I've not really been out Oh, well, I have been out, but I've not done a video or anything like that on landscape photography. Is because I swapped my camera system. I've, it's hard to say, but I've left Fujifilm. Um, I really didn't want to. Uh, I've jumped onto the uh, the Sony bandwagon. I wouldn't say I'm loving the system just yet. I think the uh, the, the changeover from Fujifilm to Sony is going to be a a bit of a learning curve. Um, I, I love my Fujifilm cameras and. Uh, it's very, it's very upsetting. I had to sell all my uh, my lenses and swap them over for food, uh, for Sony lenses, and uh, really didn't want to do that. But um, a lot of people sort of experiencing the, uh, the lock-up problems that Fujifilm are having. I've had three XH1s, and all three of them had issues. So um, I do, you know, weddings and commercial events, and need a reliable camera. So uh, very, very sad. But uh, as soon as Fujifilm fix these. Uh, very random and obviously please don't let this put you off buying the camera there's a lot of people out there very very happy with them um, and yes I've tried them I know which memory cards you can't use I know which batteries you can't use I've done all that so I know this might uh, upset a lot of people because Fujifilm have got a lot of love and rightly so they're stunning cameras and um, yeah, I was really really upset about uh, about swapping the system over to be honest with you there's no toys about it though the Sony oh, I've got the Sony a7 III uh, camera now, and uh, it's. I'd rather the, o the A7R 3 really because of the sort of the landscape sort of interest. But um, with my sort of commercial work needing a good video camera, a uh, good balance with ISO and everything, I thought the the A7 III was a good a good all-round hybrid camera. And to be honest with you, I am getting used to it. I'm really liking it. I'm loving the functions. I'm loving the fact that you can customise all the buttons. And yeah, it's a really really good camera. It's, dynamic range is absolutely incredible I've never seen anything like it focusing unbelievable so I will get used to the camera uh, I've got a lot of friends that have got them and they absolutely love theirs so yeah fingers crossed it won't take me too long but I've had it for two weeks now and <laughs> enough's enough I've got to get out use it as often as possible and I've got a wedding this Friday my first wedding with the Sony camera so yeah lots to learn <laughs> So this is Three Cliffs Bay, and what a gorgeous evening it is, it is as well. The light is just absolutely epic tonight. I've just uh, got the drone out dead quick and sent it over. Did a nice panoramic of the uh, of the beach, which I've always wanted to do with the drone, uh, but I've never had the right light for it. It's really, really awesome tonight, so I'm looking forward to this. It's going to head over to the... There's two photograph locations here. There's one which is at the top um, of the hill, just over, overlooking the three peaks or three cliffs. And there's another, when the tide's gone out, it leaves um, pools of water down there, so they reflect quite well as well. So I'm gonna have a look up here first, then I'll run down there. That was a bit chaotic. I literally got up here thinking I had loads of time because the sun's nowhere near gone down. 
And, and as I got here, I was pretty much flying the drone around and noticed how good the side lighting on the side of the three cliffs were. So I ran up, set the tripod on dead quick. And my intention was to get a panoramic sweeping around all three cliffs. There's the three peaks there. Um, and all around and what I always do with the panoramic is get a lot more into the scene than I actually think I'm going to need so I actually took the pano right around there it ended up being about 10 stitches <laughs> so I was um, yeah it's disappointing now though because the, the the light's sort of gone beyond a cloud but I'm pretty sure we're going to get some nice uplift in um, I've checked the weather and I think there's just the, just the right mix of high and low cloud to give us a nice uh, a nice uplifting so I'm going to give it what time is it now it's half eight so I've got an, I've got exactly an hour before sunset so I'm going to give it an hour I'm going to sit here and have something to eat chill out um, but yeah as far as settings go I mean obviously going from the Fuji which is a crop sensor uh, using the Sony which is a full frame I've got to take into consideration the depth of field I'm going to lose um, so what I decided to do normally I kind of focus halfway like a third into the scene but I focused on that mountain there F14 um, I was tempted to focus stack that pano as well but because the light was changing so fast I thought there's absolutely no chance that's going to work um, but yeah we are getting a bit of colour in the sky I think it'll be nice. I, I'm, I'm staying positive. I think it's going to be nice. So switching systems hasn't actually been as much fun as it sounds. I really, really, really didn't want to leave, leave, leave Fuji. Um, I adored Fuji cameras. I adore the X-H1. It's, um, you know, as far as like ergonomics and shooting experience and the colours you get off it and just the overall camera, the tracking and everything. I, I really, really enjoyed the camera. I loved it. I uh, had everything. I had all my lenses sorted, so I was, I was set. I didn't need to buy anything. Um, but yeah, swapping over to Sony's not been not been something I ever wanted to do. And I know there's a lot of people sort of messaged me when they seen on Instagram that I'd sort of changed systems. A lot of people wanted to know why. Um, and it's literally, it's not, you know, a few, a few of my subscribers have messaged me as well saying the same thing. You know, you just, we adore the cameras. There's nothing, no, no two ways about that. It's just having reliable tools. You know, you couldn't go to work in a car that broke down occasionally. You know, you'd have to get it sorted. If you couldn't fix it, you'd have to get a new one. Um, it's just having reliable tools because I'm lucky I've got some really really good contracts uh, some of my commercial clients and I can't let them down um, so if I, if I ever find out that I mean the, the other thing is I mean the, the positive of Sony I am loving the camera I, it's it's different it, it's not as ergonomically friendly it's not you know I, I'm not I'm not nuts about it. <laughs> uh, I did love my Fuji. I'm not nuts about the Sony yet. I know that will come. I know a lot of you shoot, shoot Sony and uh, really love the camera. The dynamic range, the ISO and all that, it, it focusing is just mind blowing. It's phenomenal. It's just sort of tactile things like, you know, ergonomics and things like that I'm, I'm struggling with. But yeah, the lenses are stunning. I've, I've picked up, serious lenses I've picked up. Uh, initially, because it was a bit of a hurry, I swapped all my Fuji lenses and I picked up um, the Zeiss 24 to 70, which is F4 f4 lens so that's going to be sort of my go-to that's an uh, image stabilized lens as well that's going to be my go-to for uh the video from the video clients as well because uh, the camera's got the ibis the lens has got it, 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 uh, image stabilization as well that's fantastic i've also picked up the absolutely stunning i've got to say i'm already in love with this lens 70 to 200 f4 ah oh, this was my favorite canon lens so when i left canon about five or six years ago went to fuji this was one of the lenses i missed the most the f4 I had two eights, they were too heavy. I love the F4 lenses. They don't weigh anything and they are awesome. Initially, just the Sam, Samyang uh, 20mm 1.8. And I bought this because I didn't actually, I didn't actually see anything in the Sony range that I wanted that I could afford. <laughs> Hellish expensive. And this is a 1.8 aperture. So for astrophotography, it's absolutely superb. It's, um, it's ta I know Samyang's a phenomenal lens value for money and they are just really really good optically um, so f8 and above I know that's going to be a good lens so yeah I needed my wide angle 20 mils wide enough for me that was about 400 quid so as a starting point that was really really good I was happy with that um, yeah manual focus manual aperture but not a problem with landscape photography back to the photograph <laughs> enough enough gear talk um, this, these, these piece of equipment I am really going to rave about. Um, I love doing panoramics, as you probably know, and this is a game changer. Instead of having to set up your tripod, make sure the top of the make sure the, the tripod is completely vertical, so when you spin the camera uh, head round like this, it's not going to go out of uh, it's not going to go on the wonk. Uh, this is absolutely amazing. This is a tripod leveler. Uh, this bit here, so it's just just that piece there, and basically all it is is you can probably tell that my tripod is nowhere near straight. As long as this piece here. So you adjust that. As long as you get the bubble that's in there level, 
it doesn't matter about the rest of the tripod it's so much quicker and i do uh, virtual tours as well so that's gonna be mega handy for that well it is mega handy for that so yeah really loving that and that's about 40 quid siru do one as well which is a sirui siru do one about 120 quid this is 44 quid i think on, on amazon i'll put a link it's brilliant if you, if you like doing panoramics get one of them honestly it's brilliant Just stunning, isn't it? I love it here. Absolutely gorgeous. There is a bit of colour coming through the sky. The clouds are quite interesting. So what I'm doing, another panorama, panoramic, panorama. Um, and what I've, I've, done, I've got two options. I've done a panoramic having the horizon there on the on the lower third, and making more of the sky because the sky's lighting up quite well. So the weather might what might have been right. Looks like a falling down hole here, doesn't it? <laughs> um, and yeah just spinning around having the the horizon pretty much on the lower third and then also doing the, doing the opposite having the horizon on the top third so just getting a lot more of the sand and everything in the foreground which is which is really nice uh, but yeah this this head is just amazing because i just how on earth would you get the tripod level um on a bank like this it'd take forever my this tripod doesn't even have a bubble on the top so you'd have no chance so yeah it just means that as i spin the camera around the uh, the horizontal um indicator on the back of the screen stays green and it means then as well when you're cropping in Lightroom when you've stitched all the images together Lightroom hasn't got to do all this warping and stuff so when you're cropping in you're not you're not cropping in a massive amount out of your corners you've pretty much got it's a couple of millimeters that you're losing just by having this and um, I love it that's one of the best things I bought so uh, yeah really really handy uh, I've still got the polarizer on <laughs> um, so the clouds aren't really going to cause any problem with the polarizer uh, on a panoramic so yeah just going to focus over there about f11 and um, just do a, a three stop bracket um, ISO 100 f11 the base image is a quarter of a second so it's getting quite dark uh, but this, look I don't really need to bracket with the Sony to be honest the dynamic range is absolutely nuts uh, but it's nice to have a clean clean file you can work with if you need to you've got the other two files um, I probably won't I'll probably just use the um, the one uh, the one file just because you get I find you get a cleaner image cleaner but more 3d more natural looking image uh, than, than you do with the HDR sometimes so it's nice to try it with the one anyway you can use the bracket shot if you need to uh, so yeah I'm just gonna focus over there I'm gonna lower this down now to get the horizon shot again just focusing over there on them rocks make sure the camera's level got the got the horizontal indicator focusing over there I've got my back button focus so my manual focus um, back, button, back button focusing over there which is pretty much to infinity and then spinning the camera around there ISO, ISO 100 F11 boom dead simple As nice as that spot is, I don't think the light is going to give us the shot on that occasion. So I'm going to, I promised myself I wasn't going uh, down so the sun goes down. And we've got about 10 minutes. So we've got 10 minutes to get down there, wait by rock pool, and um, hopefully get some colour in the skyways. Absolutely no chance, I don't think, but I'm not giving in. <laughs> Well, it really has gone flat and horrible now, as far as light goes. I think I'm definitely wishful thinking, but I still think there's an image here because it's it's gone really flat, grey, and horrible. But I think it makes a nice, quite uh, a nice contrasty black and white because the this this area of rock here with all these sort of diagonal lines are really nice and contrasty, and they point really nice to the reflection over there of three cliffs. Um, so I think there's actually a nice black and white there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a single shot F10 focusing on the rock just there in the foreground, which is about three metres in. I've turned the polarizer off as well, so I'll get a nice reflection in the water. 
and underneath the water area isn't particularly nice anyway. So yeah, the polarizer's off. Uh, it's giving me a nice reflection of three cliffs over there at the end of it as well. So I'm just going to pan that around. I'm just going to make sure that the exposure on the histogram, I'm going to go to F8 and up the ISO as well, uh, say to ISO 200. So just, where are we now? Second exposure, one second exposure, um, focusing about five meters into the scene. And I think as a nice panoramic, black and white, nice and contrasty there on them lines. I think this would be nice, quite nice. I think it just goes to show that, you know, just because the light's gone, you can still make an image. So I'm going to do a two second timer on this, not going to bracket, uh, doesn't need it. Yeah, how steep that is. <laughs> Quite a lethal coming up there. So in short, am I happy with my switch over to Sony? Yes and no. I think I'll learn to love the camera. I, I, I've still got my Fujifilm X-Pro2. That's, that, that's never going anywhere. It's always going to be my number one camera. I adore using it. Still got a few primes. Yeah, I'm still going to be Fuji at heart. <laughs> um, I do really appreciate how good the Sony is. Obviously, having a camera that's just reliable, fundamental issue for me. Um, I needed that. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I do really, really miss the X-H1. I, um, when I had it, I adored the ergonomics. As you, you guys who watch, regularly watch my videos will know how much I love my Fuji cameras. And the X-H1 for me just seemed to be, you know, as good as it was ever gonna get. So yeah, I do miss that. I miss the lenses. I've sold all, most of my lenses. Got about three left. So yeah, I miss it. I miss all the Fuji ecosystem. The Sony ecosystem is not as friendly on the wallet. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it, it's a bit of a kick. Uh, I have mentioned it to Fuji. I have actually sent them videos of my cameras locking up several times. And hopefully they'll pass that, that information on and they can, they can resolve the issues. Uh, but it's not the memory cards and it's not the batteries. Uh, enough tests on that. So this shoot was in part just another another excuse really just to get used to using the camera because you know it's a big deal swapping systems especially one that I've had for five years and love so much and the Sony is dramatically different so you know it's got its quirks as well it's not a perfect camera but uh, I'm sure I'm sure I'll get to learn to love it. I mean this obviously is not a review it's not a comparison they're different cameras I know which one's my favorite <laughs> um, but yeah, this isn't the review. So please don't be discouraged from buying a Fuji camera. They're absolutely awesome. Uh, please, I hope I don't have anybody on, on my back from Fuji after this video now as well. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. Please hit the subscribe button and the like button and leave us a comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, your thoughts on the Fujifilm cameras are always welcome. Uh, don't hate me. I'm just telling you my experiences. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. See you again soon. Take care.